everyone, welcome back. It's Moe, aka Swedish Whiskey Girl. Today we're here with something that I find quite fascinating. I'm... I can't believe I've been able to not try them for this long. Uh, these three bottles that I have in front of me were sent to me by Val de Spino, which is an old sherry house or bodega in Spain. They are dating back to 1430 which is quite incredible. And they've been supplying the Scotch whiskey industry with sherry casks for about over three decades, I think. But they did get this idea that they're supplying their sherry casks for the Scotch whiskey industry. What if they could hold some casks back and they matured some whiskey themselves in these casks? But they've not just done it with whiskey, they've also done it with rum and brandy. So I'm going to try these in order of ABV, I'm going to start with the brandy. Brandy is of course a grape distillate and they have matured, need to double check, because these all are matured in different sherry casks. Uh, so the brandy sits at 42.5% ABV and has been matured in Val de Spino Fino and Amontillado casks. The rum is Caribbean rum, so they've bought rum from Panama and the Dominican Republic, it sits at 43% ABV. Um, they, it's been matured in Valdespino Oloroso casks and then we have the malt whiskey which is whiskies distilled in both Scotland and Spain and they, it's been matured in Valdespino Palacortado and Oloroso casks. They all retail are around £65 I think and they are released in batches. I uh, saw so in some places the whiskey sold out, I think the rum's available in some places so it just depends what your local retailer is doing. But yeah, I can't wait to try it. We're, we're gonna start with the brandy and see what we think. Let's start by having a look on the nose. It's very much a brandy, I think. I don't know too much about brandies but the ones I have tried you can kind of tell straight away, just like with whiskey, you can kind of tell what type of spirit it is. For me, brandy has this kind of note between musty, wine cellar, moss, and it's quite earthy in a way. But there's also sweetness, almost like a raisin sweetness, don't know, that might be coming from the sherry in this case. But really interesting to see the influence of Fino casks in um, this brandy because Fino is a dry type of sherry and you don't really see it a lot in maturation. Maybe because you don't get that much of a flavour into the casks, I'm not really sure. But it's um, Oloroso and Pedro Jimenez, which are sweeter styles. And these kind of red, dark red, um, more raisin-like or nutty sherries tend to give a little bit more of a kick and you can get it through into the whiskey. But yeah, quite fresh, quite branded. I wouldn't say it's overly sherried on the nose, but you do get that kind of raisin note. Kind of old, like when you open a raisin jar, that's kind of what you get. But let's have a little taste, slender back. I'm quite not used to drinking brandy, but straight away I do think you get like a, a phenol character. I'm just trying to identify this because I'm not, I mean, the sherry is of course fortified wine, so it's also made from grapes, just like this brandy distillate, so I'm not really sure where the brandy flavour is coming in and where the sherry characters coming in. If you gave this to me blind, because I, the ABV, which is at 42.5, isn't that punchy. So if you gave this to me blind without having anything to compare it to, I might think that this was a sherry. Mm, maybe it's a little bit too strong for that, but it's definitely has this kind of character of the mixes between a um, light, Fino character and something slightly more golden, which is really interesting. I mean, just this as an experiment, using spirits and then using your own casks, I think is quite fascinating. 
So this is definitely one of the things I'm the most looking forward to trying. I really like that brandy. That's it's a great combination of brandy and sherry and I think that might actually help me like and appreciate Fino a bit more or these lighter styles of cherry, or cherry, sherry because I don't tend to like them as much as I do maybe something darker and sweeter hmm. let's move on to the rum and this is at 43% Ooh. definitely think that this is molasses rum oh yeah, this kind of sweet, kind of yeah, just almost desserty, and it's uh, the influence of all the rosso casks. Quite tropical, quite molasses-like, but it's slightly nutty as well. Let's have a little taste, Slangera. I don't think I've tried that many rums that have had the influence of sherry casks before. Nice! It's um, a sweet rum. don't think... What I like about this is that the sherry isn't taking over. I still get the rum character, but then the Oloroso also comes in. And it's that nice balance that you can find in some uh, Oloroso matured whiskies, where it's not just a big sherry monster, it is definitely the spirit combining with the cask. And very much not dry. It's very approachable and light and kind of... It is quite cold in here at the moment, but it's it feels quite fresh. Molasses, but fresh, if that makes sense. And then we have the whiskey, of course. I'm very fascinated about this. I don't know where the whiskey's coming from, unfortunately. Uh, the only information I have is that it's distilled in Scotland and Spain. Ooh. Hmm. It has this kind of... Um, funk to it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to find, I definitely recognise this from other Scotch whiskey distilleries and I just can't name them because I really want to kind of pinpoint what it might be. But like a meaty, grassy, funky spirit. Hmm. almost like it would be something lightly peated because I think that's the easiest way of explaining it if you have tried whiskey sometimes it's lightly peated but you can't really say that it smokes straight away it just feels a bit funky because you don't really know the balance between the peat and the spirit if that makes sense almost a bit coastal as well so it does remind me of like islands whiskey very interesting. I wasn't expecting that at all, uh, but let's have a taste, Slangera. Hmm, I wonder if that is peated. The same here. You get the, the whiskey character, and then you have this kind of cloud of sherry surrounding it. But it isn't the big sherry monster. It's a nice balance. I thought um, just because there are a sherry bodega they would want the casks to kind of stand out and be the main component. But I don't think that's the case flavour wise. I think they find a really nice balance between them. I'm also really really curious to find out what casks they are. If they are American, European oak. If they are... I would guess they're American oak. If they're seasoned, if there's some that have been like young bodega cast, or if they've done just something different with them, um, it's quite interesting. But yeah, it does feel like an island whiskey with quite a punchy character that has. I really like this. It's um, 
even though it isn't the type of spirit I usually like. From the nose I was a bit hesitant, but the palette's lovely. It's very well, like, it's a full body, lovely flavours where, because sometimes I, I think it's a, an issue with whiskies to have that kind of funky, grassy, meaty, almost lightly peated style, because I don't know, like, something just stands out and something's too much. But this, I mean, it feels like maybe the sherry's contributing with a little bit of sweetness, it just rounds it off and just makes it feel like golden and well-rounded which is really lovely to see. And this is the highest strength, it's 43.5. They're all very, very drinkable at the ABV. Um, I mean, especially if you're used to spirits, you might even think this is low, but I think it's, none of them have felt flavorless, which I'm really surprised to see. Not surprised to see, but I didn't know I was expecting it all um, because I've never tried anything like this. So it's, it's such a fun, thing to be able to try. Definitely, if you're looking for something different, or if you're a sherry fan looking to get into whiskey, or if you're just... I mean, these bottles are, I think they're stunning. All this glass. Um, and I... So you can hold when you're pouring. Uh, which I appreciate, because I like a bit of a, an aesthetic bottle. But it's something that I will definitely have on the shelves and I think my friends will go, oh, what's that? Um, so yeah, I'm also currently writing for a, a whiskey magazine online and another one that is uh, a fiscal one, but I am focusing on European whiskey. So I'm quite interested to see more about the whiskey in Spain because I don't know how they're, they haven't said this is Spanish whiskey or Spanish brandy or Spanish rum. Um, because obviously some of the whiskey isn't from Spain, at least some. Um, so it's interesting to see how they're kind of working between the lines. Uh, this is just branded as malt whiskey. So yeah, fascinating. I'm gonna have another sip of them all three and then we'll sum it up. Ooh, the brandy feels super sweet uh, now on the nose. Probably after that whiskey that was a bit uh, funky. <laughs> So sweet, it's almost like a candy, like a oh, like leather leather candy. <laughs> like Turkish delight needs leather. That's what this reminds me of. I really love it. I definitely need to get into brandy more. It's delicious. I can't wait to be able to like tell things apart. Um, that's what's so exciting about spirits, you can just learn more and more. Maybe one day I can even do tastings when it's like different spirits. So we'll try a rum and we'll try whiskey and we'll try a brandy together. And the rum is very much a rum. I think the sherry influence is quite subtle in them all. I think you can taste the Oloroso the most probably on the rum, which is called Rum Viejo. And yeah. Hmm. I do think the brandy and the rum probably are more easy to like if you aren't that used to spirits. Uh, the malt whiskey, just because it has that kind of character that I explained a little bit earlier, it's a little bit more difficult, but if you like that sort of thing, really, really lovely. Um, I'm quite surprised by all of these, because I didn't know what to expect, so... Yeah, lovely. I will definitely keep an eye on Valdespino, and I really, really want to try their sherry as well at some point. I have tried, um, I said a Palo Cortado I have at home, or I said an Oloroso can't remember <laughs> but that is really lovely as well so definitely very interested in sherry and to see what more comes out of these if you've tried these I'd love to hear it please put it in the comments here below what you thought or if there's a, a sherry you would recommend to me it's um, definitely a world that's very interesting I think if you do like sherry whiskies finding out more of the sherry industry is also fascinating especially because the sherry industry is suffering a little bit because not a lot of people drink it nowadays 
So yeah, check out your sherry producers in Spain. But I hope you've liked this video. If you have, feel free to leave a thumbs up and maybe subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to support us, I'd be so over the moon if you would consider using my affiliate links with either Master Malt, the Whiskey Exchange or the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. You'll find those links and the links to my other social channels if you're curious about those in the description here below. And I also want to say a massive thank you to my wonderful supporters on Patreon. I'm so grateful I have you guys with me on my whiskey journey. So thank you so much for supporting me. But I hope you've all had an absolutely wonderful day. Slanjava. Skoal.